Okay, so in 8.5 now, we come to something that is crucial to, um, to this chapter and to our studying the motion of objects. So what we're after often is the vector sum of the forces exerted on an object. So say now you have a cup on a table or a book on a table. Um, we often want to determine what are what is the vector sum of the forces acting on that cup or on the, the on the book on the car that's moving what is the resultant force if we add up all the forces acting on it okay we want to know that that's very important for us why because if we know that then we also know the time rate of change in the object's momentum and by knowing this we're able to um, determine the object's motion. Okay? So the point I'm trying to make is, or the book is trying to make, is that we want to have a method for determining the vector sum of the forces acting on. And now this is important. I'm going to harp on about this again and again. On an object. Not by an object. On an object. Okay? So to calculate the object's motion, you need to know the vector sum of the forces exerted on the object only. Now, uh, in my experience, students often get confused between forces that are, are acting on an object and forces that are, are exerted by the object on its surroundings. Okay. So now... Um, if we're interested in determining this vector sum of forces, what, what do we do? We draw a free body diagram. This is when we separate that object, that, that uh, cup, that, uh, that book on the table, that car. We separate that thing that we're trying to, whose motion we're trying to determine. We separate it um, and, the, and the forces uh, exerted on it from the rest of the collection of objects, from its surroundings. We separate it from its surroundings and, uh, and we draw something called a free body diagram. So now let's have a look at an example here. By the way, m my suggestion to you is go and check out this, um, this gray or blue box called uh, Procedure for Drawing Free Body Diagrams. Okay. Um, let's do this example here. A book on the floor. A book on the floor. Okay. Draw a free body diagram for a book lying motionless on the floor. Okay. So the way that what this textbook does is, the first thing it does is it draws a center of mass diagram. What is a center of mass? It's a circle with a cross. Okay. Now this re represents this book. It's the center of mass for the book. Okay? Now remember, a free body diagram, we are considering the forces acting on the book, not um, forces exerted by the book. Please don't get that co confused. So what are the forces acting on the book? So there's the book. It's represented by a, a center of mass. What are the forces acting on the book? Well, we've got one contact force acting up. That's the floor on the book. And we have one field force, um, the earth on the book. So we have a gravitational force acting down. So you've got your force up, the uh, floor on the book, and you've got your gravitational force down. Okay? So just a little, um, this is also quite important. How do you write these forces? So here we have F for force. It's also F is also for Freddy and uh, all kinds of things. But in this case, F is for force. And the G over there um, indicates gravity. Okay, so force. And then what type of uh, force is it? It's a field, a gravitational field force. And over here we have Earth acting on book. Okay, so this is the way that um, we can write these uh, forces. Uh, gravity and then earth on book. 
And over here we have force, contact force, C, that's a contact force, floor on book, FB. So it's important, if you've gotten these right, that both of these have the same uh, last letter here, B and B for book. What that means is, these forces are the forces of the surroundings acting on the book. The floor on the book and uh, the earth on the book. And then the other thing that we want to do, or there's a few things, we want to set up also an axis, okay? And here we set up the x-axis as well. And positive is up, we choose positive is up. Because these are vectors, we have to choose a direction. In this case, we chose it as up. And the next thing is the arrows, okay? Uh, because it's in equilibrium, these arrows, the length of the force vector arrows, are the same length. That means their magnitude is the same, equal and opposite. And then the last thing is that the, we also want to write the acceleration. The uh, acceleration vector is zero because it's lying at rest on the floor. Okay, so we'll see in, in the next videos, maybe we'll do some more examples.